C'est vrai. Pousse, pousse, pousse. Pousse, 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 pousse. Pousse, 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 pousse. Eh hey, ouais, mais ouais, Kama. Quel bagarre. Pousse, 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 pousse. Come on, let's go. That's a weird there, cat. Let's be. You're happy. Got your head. <laughs> hey, I'm sorry, let's get this plan if you can. It's all right, cat, eh? Doing quite well, this cat. Hey, <laughs> viewers, I'll. <laughs> I've decided to go ahead and put um, a Ubuntu on this. It's actually quite a nice operating system. Following yesterday's hack with the uh, trying to change a text on a start menu button, I followed the instructions all right, but for some reason the buggered up Windows Explorer. It would boot to the desktop and it wouldn't load all the icons on the start menu or taskbar up. It wouldn't load up at all. Somehow Windows Explorer got corrupted for some reason. So. I tried to repair discs and all that, repair discs, and I had that, um, I wanted me to bloody install Windows all together. Start from scratch again, but, sort of, nah, bugger it. This is an experimental machine anyway, so, I've got all the, um, software and stuff to put XP back on it, so, I had a, the key to activate it again. So I decided to get, well, why not put, um, Ubuntu on it? I've also managed to grab a copy of, uh, I've got a copy of, um, 64-bit Windows XP Professional. And a spare product key for it, so have a go with this operating system. I will try and see if I can put the 64 bit XP Professional on this machine. The uh, update thing mightn't work. I've got to get the 64 bit, um, I've got to get the Service Pack 4 for it for 64 bit though. To update it. I've run out of all the 32 bit mods and cons to get the 32 bit version up to date. I've got to restore all the drivers. It's complete fresh install, no drivers, only nothing. The Wi-Fi works without the drivers. Generic Ubuntu drivers, though. The clock's wrong for some reason. Oh, no, it's not. Oh, good. So it was wrong yesterday. Oh, there you go. They're all automatically adjusted. There you go. Yeah, I've got to get used to this. One thing I didn't like, really like about it, this should be down the bottom. If you can make this down the bottom like Windows, have a task, this task by down the bottom, it'd be nice. There we are. Go on. I wish I'd make that so you just drag it down the bottom and make it customised up to make it look like a Windows. That way you can get used to the Windows. Then you can just go straight onto this and be wouldn't be much of a big change for you, but that's something you've really got to get used to. This is my first time of Linux. Of all the Linux reviews I read, this is the best OS, so I'll stick with Ubuntu. Yeah, still needs more RAM and everything. It's not, it's a bit, bit faster um, than XP on a uh, half a gig of RAM, but definitely got to wait, put the four gig in it, it'll be really good. Anyway, let's get all the, all the drivers for this board in uh, the sound card installed. It doesn't look like this Zion uh, sound card supported on Linux. Uh, no, it doesn't either. Oh, damn it. Yeah, this does that. <laughs> error, error, not supported. Can't run it. Oh, okay, what about the Asus board chipsets will work? Interesting. Does not support Linux, this um, sound card. That's the next thing with Ubuntu, you get to find all the hardware that supports it, the driver wise. Alright. That was like a B side for Ubuntu, but at least this you didn't have to reset your computer as such. Okay, let's see if the motherboard drivers were. So take the sound card out so that the uh, motherboard lets me install its drivers. Because if there's a sound card in there, the motherboard won't let me install its drivers. Because the motherboard, uh, that sound card takes priority over the motherboard's one, obviously. Alright. Well, the Asus drivers won't work on this either. Oh, it's not supported on um, uh, Linux either. Damn it. None of the drivers for this board support Linux. 
Ja. Now, well, if that doesn't support Linux, I'll try to put a 64-bit XP in here then. What a shame the drivers don't suit Linux. It works on the side, it's operating right system, but it's using no generic stuff, but no sound. And there's no graphics, got no installing and video um, thing on here and everything. It's a shame the drivers aren't supported on um, Linux for this board and the card. <laughs> what a bugger. It's not a bad operating system there. Let's see if this. Uh... Yes, it works. I think it's going to work. Yeah, I use infra, um, infrared. Um, I use infrared bloody uh, ISA burner. I burnt the ISA to a disc properly because the way I burnt this before was just the bloody um, the ISA file itself, one file. What the infrared burner does, it extracts the ISA, burns the actual CD on the new disc as it actually is a CD as a computer would see it and boot it off. So, looks like it's going to work. Got a spare product key there too for 64 bits, so hopefully it's going to work. Beautiful. Yeah. Now you just got to find the um. The hack to this registry mod for to get this one up to date. This for the XP, but I might just put the service pack four on here because the um yeah, it's pretty much the same thing as doing the uh, POS ready hack. It's the same thing because the service pack four has all the um, major components from POS ready that were actually are tested to work with XP. This um my guy that made the unofficial service pack has actually um tested it properly, so that it makes sure that Windows works properly. And then, okay, let's, I'll get ready uh, through with this so we can um, set this up. Original retail upgrade pack. Oh, we've got this, we had a 98 computer. And we upgraded from Windows 98. They yeah, gave us this. Hmm, Microsoft Plus. That's something I've always wanted to get. Plus for Windows XP. Get Microsoft Plus, the ultimate companion for XP. I wonder where I can get that from. Because that's a big um, add on pack. Has all lots of bonus extras for XP. Now I'm doing a um, proper full format here for this partition again. Start again completely from scratch on a clean install, clean hard drive. So this should be a better running operating system. Yeah, it's on a fresh, fresh um, partition. Alright, it'll take a while because it's a proper format. But it looks pretty good. I've always wanted a 64-bit XP because this is a 64-bit machine. So. We've always had it so damn limited since buddy, we had it built for all these years running 32 bit. So it's just limited this machine. I haven't got the maximum out of this out of this hardware with 32 bit. 64 bit's the best option to get the best ultimate optimum performance out of this hardware. In 2005 that was a pretty damn good motherboard. And it was a pretty damn good computer when it stayed. I used to play Half-Life and everything on this thing. So it's, a, it's still a pretty good machine now. It's just the uh, by today's state it's a bit of a, um, a room heater with a penny and four down. But it's still a pretty damn good processor, despite it being a room heater. That's how they were then. We had these in school, the penny and fours. With a room full of um, these uh, these computers, they're, they're the same model as this one. The compact version there, so they're probably the model before this one. And some were this HP one in another room. That we knew at the time. We had about bloody 30 of these in one room in the computer room, and boy, this heated the room up big time. In the summertime, we didn't want to know about it. Bugger! I repaired this other blender. The jaw third a metal part of this um, rubber coupling. Put screws in it so it will grab it again. Because the rubber burnt off. Did that? Tack quarter the top of the blade back on. Now it doesn't want a bloody guy. Since it doesn't let it work, good for a couple of seconds, and that bloody um, drive coupling shattered in the pieces. What a bugger! One three one eight seven three now. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> what a bugger! Ah! Damn it! Yep, still formatting. 
I can't pull this little de device apart. HDL is a company that made it. <coughs> Bloody hiccups, I hate them, they're annoying. It says switches, two dummy ones, the one that actually does something. <coughs> the one hits this micro switch. And there's a motor. Rui, Rui Ying, motor and electric company. Limited. <coughs> Model RY5443M23, 230 volt, 50 hertz, E class insulation. Hmm. Drag race vector, maybe I might sa save this one for something else. It's quite a high torque motor. I've got a good practical use for this motor. Generator, perhaps? Don't know. Pissy little fan. There we are. So I cut this off the cord so I can get this out of here. Shine the bloody couple and break. I would have had more fun blending stuff, but that's its weak spot. The bloody plastic coupling. Still going strong, but yeah. So you can send me some power supplies. Uh, those are those are offered. The send me one, please do, because um, even though you're in America, as long as I got the 120 and 240 volt switch option on the back, or, or if they're 120 and 240 volt capable. So that's all that matters. As long as they're a good brand and um, a high, four, six, 460 watts or above, I'm happy. This one is um, 100 to 240 volt range power supply. Doesn't have the switch. It runs off anything between 100 to 240 volts, so it's right. That's the main concern. As long as it says that and it runs off anything, anywhere between 100 to 240 volts, and it all has, a, all has that switch in the back, I'm happy. It'll fit. It'll work. Ah, bugger. It turns out my spare product key is not valid. I can't use this thing because I have not got a valid product key that works with this, um, this version. So if anyone out there is gonna, happens to have a spare copy of 64-bit professional and have an excess spare key that's not used, I'm willing to donate it for this machine. I'm very, very, very happy. I would appreciate it. Anyway, that'll be enough for now. Thanks for watching.